During World War II, the Red Cross gave free coffee and donuts to the American troops. This ended up having unexpected consequences with British troop morale, as, on top of the fact that American troops were paid three times as much to fight, they also got free coffee and donuts. So the Red Cross, to reduce animosity between the Allies, began charging for the coffee and donuts. When questioned to this very day, a large percentage of World War II veterans have still not forgiven the Red Cross for this changeover. This is a psychological phenomenon called categorical change. You place your world in categories and classify things according to how you understand them. Connections become very strong between those things. We don't remember things in reality like pictures, sound clips, or video clips. We remember a lot of other information bundled together, similar to computer programming data tagging. Anyone can store and file. It's finding the information again that requires skill. Your memory will include smells, thoughts in your mind, your personal body image, and more. In this case, donuts were classified as a free bonus for being a serviceman, and then they got removed. Had they always been charged for, the category never would have been made in the first place, and there would have been no complaints from the serviceman. If you categorize ideas or pieces of reality together in a category, and then that category no longer fits, a person is often confused as to what to do and it causes fear and regression, because they don't know what to do and how to categorize things. The human brain is actually evolved to not change very much at all. It is made to conserve identity, and studies on other mammals show that they have parts of their brain evolved to be extremely malleable so they can change with new experiences and environments. So many people I know, including myself, for the first 20 years of my life, were stuck on the idea of identity and believed changing who I was was evil, and a betrayal to myself. I am a completely different person than I was five years ago, and I fully now embrace that I will be a completely different person five years from now, thanks to the acquisition and integration of new knowledge and learning, to let go of the parts of my identity that are harmful to myself and others, and may slow down my ability to overcome biases. Changing yourself or your mind is viewed as being wishy-washy or weak without principle or morals, as you can be swayed or taken a different position based on new evidence. Being easily swayed by opinion or peer pressure is a sign of weakness, but being swayed by a new evidence and recategorizing how you think about something is progress. Religion is all about categorizing the world into specific ways and preventing you from changing those categories through fear, either through fear of hell, social repercussions for questioning the categories, or fear of social breakdown if people question the categories. Good and evil are excellent examples. In the good category, they have God, Jesus, Christian, Mary, Church, babies, puppies, America, angels who didn't fall, heaven, and people before they ate the fruit. In the evil category, they have people, all people, but even more so if they aren't saved, Satan and fallen angels, gays, sex, drugs, other religions, or nations we happen to be at war with, or dislike, or France, and of course atheists. Of course, scientists and other academics have many, many categories they can place varying ideas into. Good and evil sounds like kindergarten to them, and they add new categories and eliminate older ones when new information is discovered or made available. The good versus evil binary system of categorizing life and reality is simple and makes it really hard to add or remove new categories because of categorical change. I almost feel like it should be illegal to use the words good guy and bad guy in politics like Mitt Romney did in the last election. It is a horrible oversimplification of people's lives we are playing with. After that, I guess they need to go potty and find their binky. Science is constantly having to recategorize its way of viewing the world, and the ones who are the most fluid about it tend to be the front-runners in history. Theology, while complex, is not changing in categories with new ideas, and instead lumps all new ideas into the closest thing they have to that idea, often making false equivalencies that trickles down and has drastic consequences in social movements. Science is moving forward so fast and changing its categories on a yearly basis toward a much more descriptive way to think about a facet of reality. Biology is changing how we view the very definition of life. The Bible still refers to bats as birds. Psychology is changing how we view our long-term views of punishment and vilification of people of psychological differences. 
The Bible says whoever shall not work, neither shall he eat. And very slowly, the common community is recategorizing diseases like depression as not laziness, but a sickness. Physics is completely changing the categories of how we think about the universe, especially in the very small and the very big. Computers and neurology change how we think about the mind. Framing is a term used to convince people of things without requiring them to change categories, just rearrange which slots they put them in. This is much easier than educating people to have to completely reorganize their categories. If you can figure out how to frame the debate, you can win the majority of the people involved, especially if you have a good feel for the public's average categories, like David Frum did. You can easily get people to make logical fallacies on their own while you aren't actually lying. Many times the truth, however, takes slow, gradual progression of slowly educating everyone that feels like it takes forever as the public mindset slowly shifts their categories, and then when the message finally sticks, it comes in in a flood, and then a backlash to mitigate the full force of the change, and the re-educating and categorizing has to get more precise and complex. Thinking in categories and language is very useful, but always be careful to change categories for more descriptive and more useful ones or you'll end up shoving a new idea that doesn't fit any of your categories into what you feel is the closest thing, making a potential major error in how you think. Or it will catch you completely off guard when the world doesn't work the way you think it does, and you can't change categories to create a better working model.